Hey folks, it's St. Patrick's Day it is, and what are we talking about? A smoked pastrami. So tender, so flavorful. We're gonna make a classic Reuben, but oh, we have stepped it up and it is oh so good. You better come and get it, and may the luck of the Irish be with you. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by the backyard and may the luck of the Irish be with you. Happy St. Patrick's Day. It is a great day. And my little sweet wife that's running at their camera, she is of Irish descent. So give us something Irish, Shan. Go ahead and let's hear it. Lucky charm. We were in New York City three or four years ago and we went by Cat's Deli and ooh, we fell in love with that place. Shan said they made the best Reuben in the world. So when I heard that, I'm thinking, whoa, Cowboy better step up the game to keep the little Irish girl happy. So folks, we are gonna go through it. It is sort of a lengthy process, but oh my gosh, is it, you be reaping the benefits when this deal is over. All the Irish will be wanting to come to your backyard or your kitchen and eat with you. So let's get after it. Pastrami, that's what we're talking about, making pastrami. Now I've seen it in the store where you could go buy it, but why would you want to buy it when you could make it original and whoo, it is so good. But the first thing you need to go is go to that there butcher's market. And you look in there and tell him if he don't see one in there, tell him, hey, I need a brisket flat because that's what I like to use the most. And they're so tender, it's the best part of it. And bring it home, I need for it to weigh around four pounds, because that's about what we're going to mix up to brine this with. Brine it, you say? Oh, we're going to be brining it, we are. Was that Irish, Shen? I, I... When we brine something, not only are we giving it flavor, but we're making it more tender and we're enhancing all them pickling spices that we're putting in there. So dig around under the cabinet on the shelf somewhere. You got to have a stock pot that's pretty big and I need you to put it over there on the stove because what are we fitting to do? We fitting to make this brine. I need you to add three quarts of water. Just dump her in there. Then we're going to add a cup of kosher Morton salt. Now this is where there is a lot of discrepancy coming in across the world wide web, plumb to Ireland and everywhere else. What is it? The pink Prague powder. Now folks, remember I told you we was using about four pounds of brisket and they break that down in so many different ways. Some of them say two teaspoons, some of them say a fourth of a cup. The cowboy sort of went in the middle and we're using a little less than a fourth of a cup. Go ahead and dump that in there. To that, I need you to add some white sugar, some brown sugar and some honey. I need you to be finding you some of that pickling spice. Looks like peppercorns and everything else in there is mixed with it, but folks, we be needing some of that, about five tablespoons. And although it's got coriander already mixed in there, folks, coriander is a big part of this recipe, so I need you to find some coriander seeds whole, and we're gonna go ahead and add some more of them. To that, we're gonna add some mustard seeds, some oregano, and some garlic. So we got everything in our stock pot, put it on about medium high heat and we need to bring this concoction to a little bowl. And I want you to be stirring it while it's getting there. And when it comes to a good bowl all the way across, I need you to stir it really well, turn the fire off, because that's all we want to do. We just want to bring it to a bowl to bring out all the flavor of this brine mixture that we got in there. Now set it aside, let it cool for about 10 or 15 minutes, and then I want you to put about three quarts of cold ice water. I'm talking got ice in it because we need this to cool down before we can put that brisket in there and let him take a night night bath for five days. So it's cooled off enough. Let's go ahead and let's put that brisket in there. And now I just want you to add some more ice to it. Don't get so much in there that it's overflowing the bucket or whatever you want to, but I want it to get really chilled right at the first. Stir it a little, put a lid on it, slip it in the ice box. And we're going to leave it how long? five days. Yes, we are. But every day, like clockwork, I went 12 hours on the money. I would go in there with some tongs and I want you to turn it over, place the lid back on it. Do that every day till we get ready. So let's take him out of there, put him over there by the sink and let's give him a good rinsing because folks, that stuff got a lot of salt on it. So I want you to rinse it all off good as you can. Put it on a flat cookie sheet or tray and I want you to take some paper towels and pat it dry everywhere. Really good. Make sure that this brisket is really dry before you even start. Let's get us a bowl and let's mix all these spices up there and we'll give it that great flavor. And that is some more coriander, some black pepper, some brown sugar, and some smoked paprika 
Get it all mixed it up in there really well. Even take your hands and make sure you ain't got none of them big clumps of that brown sugar. And then I want you to coat it everywhere, sides, top, bottom. Anywhere that you can find a place that you can put some of it, you put it on there because, folks, that's what's going to happen. Now, we need to let it sit there on the counter for about an hour, a little more, maybe an hour and a half to come to room temperature because that makes such a big difference when we're cooking this. Now, during that time, you could go out there and be firing up your smoker. Now, today, I'm going to use oak, apple, and cherry because, folks, this needs sort of a mellow smoke. Something that's really harsh would be like mesquite, and it's a little overpowering for this, and we want to leave that flavor that we've got on top and blend it with some more fruit wood. So go out here and get your fire started, and when it comes time, then we'll add the fruit wood to it. Well, we've preheated the pit barrel to about 225 degrees. Remember, I told you we're starting out with oak. We have got us uh, some good apple wood here. Apple wood, apple wood. So let's go ahead and put them in there. And I told you we was going to use a little cherry, and I need that cherry to get in there quick, quickly. So I'm going to use just some cherry chips and put them in there because I want to watch the smoke roll. Things are rolling some smoke out of there. They are. So let's get our grate on there. Now, if you're not using a pit barrel and you're using just a regular smoker, preheat it, like I said, to 225 degrees. And if you're having to do it on a conventional grill to where you can't set that temperature, you're gonna be over here on the indirect side of heat with not as many coals on the other side. So let me get this, what we call brisket, ready to go in there. And folks, we're gonna put him fat side up. And ain't that a pretty sight? Right dead center he goes. Put it in here to regulate our air and our temperature a little. help regulate the airflow that's coming out there. They're stopping some of that up. Now, the good folks at Pitburger will tell you in certain elevations this is gonna be different, but right here today, we ain't got the little bottom vent cracked open none. Now, this is probably gonna cook about four to five hours till we get a temperature of 160 to 170. Now, I'll check it in about an hour and a half, two hours, see do we need to add any more smoke or what things are looking like, but we wanna reach that temperature 160 to 170 and then we're gonna put some more magic to it. Well, folks, we've been on about three hours, running a little hot we are when I checked it, so you wanna make sure you keep an eye on that temperature of your smoker, try to keep it around there 225. So let's take a look, because I know we need to add some more smoke in here. Whoo-wee! So let's add us some more smoke. I do have me a bowl handy. Pull that grate up, add us a little more cherry. Back on there it goes. We're gonna let that temperature get up to about 165, 170, then we'll pull it, but we needed some more smoke, so hang on with us. Well, folks, I checked her and she is at 170 degrees. So we are pretty close. Let me get these bars out of there. We need to get it wrapped up with foil. Add a little wood if you need some. If not, crack it where to get a little air because we need to raise the temp on that smoker to about 300. So let me get this out of here. Set it right here. We'll wrap it with foil and go back. Well, wrapped up and back on there it is. I added me a little more wood. We gotta get that temperature up to about 300 degrees in the smoker. We wanna cook this about an hour and a half to two more to where the internal temp is about 200. This is what's gonna help get this thing so tender. Now I did add a little more wood there and I have got the vent open just for a little bit. I'm gonna let it catch a hold and get to going. Then I'll shut her back down. But we wanna maintain that temperature, 300 degrees. We ain't fur off. Whoo, happy St. Patrick's Day is around the corner. Well, we have reached the 200 degree temperature mark. Total cooking time today has been about six hours and 40 minutes. Let me see if I can, ooh, that's hot. Let me see if I can get that out there right quick. And that's about as quick as I can get it out. Now folks, that little rascal is some of that hot and we need to let this cool for about 45 minutes. I like to let mine cool in that foil inside a grocery sack. If I pick it up one more time and we're just gonna seal it right here and let her go. 
And then we'll come back and put together one of them Reuben sandwiches that Shannon's going to say thank you so much. Well, folks, it is a done deal, and you see how that thing sliced? I don't care if it's tender enough. It can be with the grain, against the grain, or anything in the world when it's good and tender, but always try to slice against that grain on any meat that's got a texture like that. And whoo, we done got it on some rye bread that Shan toasted up there, and then we done smoothed this special sauce over, sort of like Thousand Island, but it ain't. And we'll have the little recipe down there in the link below for all of this, but that sauce is in it too. Then we covered it up with meat. We did not scrimp on the meat. You know the cowboy guy is not going to do that. And then what after that? Provolone cheese. Let me think. Oh, traditionally it was Swiss. But Shan told me, no, cowboy Kent, I don't like Swiss. So we know who rules this deal. We done had to put us some, what you call it on there, provolone. So put that meat on there thick and put it on there heavy. That's what you got to do. And then guess what? One of Shan's favorite ingredients, but my least favorite, and that is sauerkraut. Now, when you get that sauerkraut, whether you make it homemade, you get it out of a sack or you get it out of a can, I want you to drain it really well and mash it to get all that moisture out of there because we don't want nothing being soggy. So what we're going to do, we're going to cut it. And then guess what? We're going to pull it out here like that so y'all can see it. And ain't it a pretty sight, Duker? Oh my gosh. Now I had some really good help today, part of the time. Part of, really? part of the time they was napping, part of the time they was interrupting filming. So here you go, hey, Major, get over here. Duker says he gonna be first today. There's the Biggs, there's the Mage. Peanut, where are you at? Our special guest. Where is Peanut? She's behind me. Come on, Peanut, hey, right here. Peanut, I'll be, Peanut, right there. There we go. Everybody got a bite they did and everybody seems pretty happy and the tail wags, yep, they going pretty good over here. Major, he's ain't got one that's big enough to wag, so. Mm. Luck of the Irish be with you and we'll be doing some clogging dancing. Uh-huh, yep, whoop. Woo! I'm telling you right now, Cat's Deli, woo! Shandon made us make a good sandwich down here in y'all's honor, so it is some fine dining. Woo wee! Good eating it was, and let me tell you what, everything that we used in this recipe will be listed right down there below in the little link where you can find it. Like I told you, it takes a little while. It is so worth it, it is. And whether it be St. Patrick's Day, 4th of July, or any day of the year, may the luck of the Irish be with you and the luck of Cowboy Kent and Shannon, all the puppies be there with you too. And as always, I tip my hat to all our servicemen and women and all the veterans and everybody who's keeping this safe and that old flag flying over our camp every time. God bless you each and every one, and I'll see you down the homemade pastrami Reuben sandwich tray. Is a good cool temperature. Uh-oh, we are having discrepancy among the troops. Major and Peanut are discussing the finer arts of St. Patrick's Day. That smokes, smokes, you don't have to go Peanut says, I'm putting on a show and ain't nobody even filming it. Peanut, peanut, peanut. Whoop, whoop, whoop. This is lengthy, it's got a zip code and I don't know it well, okay?